All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Akbar Bibb, and I'm the vice president of SEIU. And we're here today basically to wish um, the fast food workers happy Valentine's Day. Okay, this is one of the busiest years for the fast food workers. And we're not just, we're wishing the dishwashers, the cooks, the baristas, the bussers, the bartenders, and all the countless workers out there right now that are working in unsafe conditions. We want to wish them a happy Valentine's Day. We want to show them love. Everybody right now, let's show them some love. Right now, we're speaking against the low wages that they're working in, the conditions that they're working in. They're just unfair. Uh, these food workers have also been expo exposed to how the restaurant and the fast food industry, through the National Restaurant Association and Serve Safe, which is a contradiction, um, is requiring workers to pay for their own training. Can you imagine that? Paying for your own training and then they're turning around and using that money that they're paying for that training to lobby against them. So, so they're funding these efforts to keep the wages low. These very same workers were the workers that we called essential workers. And now they're being treated this way in these unsafe conditions. This is just not right. We all know that respect is essential in love. In this time right now of Valentine, we try to show love. We need to show love to these workers right now. We also need to get together for these workers that are being treated disrespectfully. And now I want to introduce one of these workers right now, Olivia Garcia. Uh, this is a leader for Fight for 15. Please step forward, Olivia. Okay. All right, is Olivia here? All right, come on down, Olivia. There you go. Buenos dias, como estamos? Yeah. Okay. Es un honor para mí estar con ustedes aquí reunida. Mi nombre es Olivia García. Uh, soy trabajadora de comida rápida por muchísimos años y líder en la, el movimiento de la lucha por 15. Hi, I'm an honor to be here with, with you uh, this morning, and I'm a five for 15 and a leader in this campaign, and also I've been working in fast food industry for many years. Um, yo les quiero decir que nosotros los trabajadores hemos sido impactados, estamos impactados, porque cómo es posible que nosotros paguemos para hacer el examen del 6 -M? 15 dólares y cómo es posible que ellos usen nuestro propio dinero para hacernos daño para hacer va en contra de nosotros eso es inaceptable I want to share with you that fast food workers have been impacted like we have to pay 15 dollars for the safe serve uh, and, and it's not fair that they are using our money for uh, to pass law against the workers this is not fair Yo soy sobreviviente de violencia. En mi trabajo, un hombre me amenazó con lastimarme y pegarme y McDonald no se ofreció absolutamente nada en ayudarme, no respondió por mí. I'm a survivor of violence at work. When I was working at McDonald's, uh, a customer tried to hurt me, and when I, uh, when I reported to my to management, they didn't do anything to help me. Nosotros los trabajadores de comida rápida hicimos muchas cosas y trabajamos muy duro para que la AVE 257 pasara, la ganamos. Tuvimos que hacer vigilia, dormir afuera del Capitolio, tuvimos que salir a huelga y cómo es posible que ahora la ley esté en pausa. As a fast food worker and a leader, uh, we did a lot of things to pass at 257, we did vigils, we came here to the Capitol to sleep overnight here, we did a strike, we submitted complaints, and how it's not possible that uh, the AB257 is paused right now. 
El, el, el NRD luchó bastante con nosotros juntos para que pasara esa ley y nosotros estamos muy indignados, estamos muy enojados, una bajeza lo que están haciendo con nuestro propio dinero de pagar el 6 y ese dinero usarlo en contra de nosotros. I'm really upset that we together fought for this law and we did everything in our power to win, but I'm very, very upset because now we are, this law is in pause. Yo quiero pedirle a, a la a NRA que, que sigamos luchando para reescribir las leyes que nos pueden ayudar a nosotros. I want to ask you to continue fighting because this law, uh, th this money that is being used against us, uh, we have to continue fighting. We are not going to, we are not going to stop. Esto no para aquí. Nosotros vamos a luchar porque ahora venimos con más fuerza. Esto no va a parar aquí porque cuando nosotros luchamos ganamos. We're gonna continue fighting together because when we fight, we win. Thank you, Olivia. We stand in solidarity with the bartenders and also the food service workers. As Olivia stated, she came down from Oakland right now. We stand with her. Cesar Puebla. Cesar Puebla. We right now, we're standing here today. We're standing in front of the Capitol so that our voices are heard. So we're going to keep going right now. We're standing right now with Senator Monique Limon. She's an ex... She's an extraordinary champion for workers' rights. Thank you, Senator. Come right on down. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We are here to show our love for our servers today on Valentine's Day. And we are going to do that by moving forward a piece of legislation, Senate Bill 476. That is the bill that we are here to support today. Uh, we know that last year uh, there was a lot of work done around workers' rights. And I led a coalition to bring more transparency to narrow the gender and racial wealth gaps. I understand the importance of giving workers the full picture. And that begins the minute they walk through the doors with the potential employer. Unfortunately, for the last decade, workers have unknowingly filled a pot of gold for an organization titled ServeSafe, whose goal, as they claim, is to keep restaurants open and keep workers employed. In reality, what has happened is that this pot of money, this $25 million that has been paid into by 3.6 million workers, is being used to work against the employee. SurfSafe has used worker funds to actively lobby against fundamental worker rights. Rights that in California workers deserve and we have fought tirelessly for. A living wage, health care and benefits, and sick leave. So today we bring this forward and we ask that training that is required by the state be put on the table as an issue that doesn't have to be paid for by the employee. Every three years, employees must renew this uh, training, and we've uncovered a loophole, a loophole in our own state policies that we want to address through SB 476. That's important for us, and we also know that it's so important for us to also support our local businesses and shops, moms and pop shops that don't know that this is happening. They don't know that the money that they are asking their employees to pay is being used against the employee. The bill does three things. The bill, one, ensures that employees no longer have to pay for the training. Two, it also ensures that we, in, we offer alternative options to serve safe that already exist and that are no cost to the employee. And the third thing is we want to make sure that we continue to protect workers' rights by ensuring that we focus on the issues that are important, a living wage, health care benefits, and sick leave. All of this provides greater transparency to the workplace. All of this does right by our employees. And all of this ensures that we continue in California to show our love, to show our support for those individuals who are serving food to all of us every single day. 
Thank you to everyone here, to an amazing group, a coalition of workers, of Californians, of organizers, of activists that are here to say, we want to close California's loophole, and we will do that this year. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you for standing with the workers. Thank you for fighting for the workers. Now, I want to bring up to the microphone here the assembly member, Alex Lee. He's an assembly member who always stood with the working families to create a stronger and more just and equitable fighting for the members here. Thank you. Come on down. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alex Lee. I'm the State Assembly Member for the 24th Assembly District representing the Bay Area. And what we're here today is to close the loophole. Close the loophole that our workers are subsidizing the NRA's lobbying efforts. Not that NRA you think about, but a different NRA that lobbies against workers. First of all, these our essential workers have been through so much during the pandemic. As you heard from our speakers, they've suffered abuse. They suffer the worst of the pandemic. But we kept them working because they need to provide for us as a collective in society and for their own families. And now we discover, as the New York Times uncovered, that they are subsidizing their own lobbying efforts to work against their working conditions, which is just downright wrong. We should remind the NRA that it is only possible through the profits generated by the workers that they even have money to lobby against their own workers in the first place. And now to double dip and make the workers pay for, of course, essential training courses to then lobby against the workers is just downright wrong. It is unfair, and you know what? It is unromantic on a day like this. So what we're doing right now is to make it fairer, because what this story and what this bill is about is making sure that those who are regulated are not left to do all the regulating themselves. We should not let the industry consolidate themselves and basically double dip on their own workers. They need to be treating the essential workers that make their industry successful and thriving with respect and one fair wage ought to be enough one job ought to be enough and let's make sure that they are not using those pro their profits and workers profit worker salaries to double dip and lobby against those efforts thank you all right thank you so much alex lee and thank you guys for the action you see all behind me right here these are our representatives that are fighting for us and fighting for the workers. Right now, I want to bring to the mic Mr. Assembly Member Miguel Santiago. He also is a tireless advocate for the economic racial justice of our members and for working people. Thank you. Come on, on up. Thank you, thank you my friend. A and thank you to everybody who's here. Muchas gracias a toda la gente que ha venido ahora aquí. And unfortunately, we're here because there's something terribly wrong with what, what's been uncovered. It's kind of that corporate fairy tale, the dream come true, where you could raise money from the workers that you're trying to oppress. Let's take a look at it. Couldn't have written a better story for corporate America and its greed. We first passed a law that says that you should, that you should take courses to handle food. Sounds pretty good, right? And then we make the worker pay for it. And then after the making the worker pay for it, we, we don't compensate for their time. That's all good. And then we uncover that these dollars are being used to lobby against your best interest, to lobby against safety standards, to lobby against health care benefits, to lobby against a minimum wage. A better story couldn't have been written to oppress workers. That's the bad news. You know, the good news is we can change that. The good news is we're going to change that. We've got a bill here in the Senate that's going to, that's going to require a heavy lift by all of us. But here's what we've learned, that when we fight, and we have a moral obligation, let's not make a mistake about this. We're, we're, we're not making this stuff up. There's a moral obligation to get this done because people have been deceived Workers have been deceived. Folks who work two jobs just to pay for rent, just to pay for food, just to raise your kids have been deceived. I don't know that any worker in America, here in California, would write a $15 check to make sure that you made less at work. 
It just doesn't make sense. We've got a moral obligation to change this. Because people deserve a living wage. People deserve health care benefits. People deserve to be able to pay for the basic things like a roof over your head, food on the table, health care benefits when you go to work. You don't deserve to be tricked into paying money to lobby against you. Now, look, I, I, and I'll say it very simple because this is personal to me. You know, my parents came from, from Mexico. They immigrated. And they had us, my brother and I. One of the first jobs my dad had that I could remember very long time ago, for those who were aging decades and decades ago, was a busboy. Because that's how we enter into becoming one day a waiter, one day a cook, right? That's, that's how this thing works. And I don't think as a little kid, or I don't think um, decades ago, my father would have thought that the, very, that, that the very industry who is helping us to put food on the table is working against our very own interest. That's got to stop. And I think this bill would fix it. So we want to we want to applaud Senator Limon and all our champions who are up here because we've got an opportunity now to make sure that the work is done whole, that you're being paid for the training and that the employer pays for the training. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Y lo digo bien breve en español. Si hay medios de comunicación en español aquí. Nosotros estamos aquí porque se ha habido una gran injusticia. Esta injusticia es muy simple, lo que han hecho corporaciones de restaurantes. Le han dicho al trabajador, vamos a ir a agarrar entrenamiento para seguir trabajando. Y no te vamos a pagar por ese trabajo. Y luego vamos a regresar y usar ese mismo dinero para luchar contra, contra la, 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 la bien salud y el bienestar del trabajo y el dinero que uno gana en el trabajo. O sea, vamos a pagar para que nos luchen contra nosotros. Eso no debe de ser y es una gran injusticia. Y es por eso que estamos ahora aquí luchando para asegurar que haya dignidad en el trabajo y ese dinero que uno paga para, para el entrenamiento no se use contra el beneficio de uno. Es muy importante. Entonces, amigos y amigas, tenemos una gran pelea enfrente de nosotros. Pero, 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 es la cosa. Vamos a ganar. <risa> Porque es una gran injusticia que hemos visto aquí en California y en todos los países, en todos los Estados Unidos. Muchas gracias, amigos y amigas. Thank you, thank you. So right behind us is all the action. So their words, they're putting the actions behind the words right now. And they're putting the action behind the fight. So right now, what I want to do is bring to the microphone Isaac Bryan, who is an advocate and a fighter for workers, please come on down. Well, good morning. I hadn't originally planned to be here. I was just walking by, and I saw working people fighting for something righteous, and I had to come see what was going on. Right, because you don't have to fight alone. You have champions in here, and we're proud to stand with you. I also saw Senator Monique Lamone, and I know when she fights, she fights to win. And so I'm not a co-author on the bill currently, but I'd be happy to join if you would like me to. We don't steal workers' wages and then use them against them. That's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. I also want you to know that the fast food council bill that they're putting the referendum on and they put a pause on it, we're going to be introducing referendum reform this year out of the elections committee, so stay tuned. All work has dignity. All workers deserve livable and thriving wages, and nobody... Nobody should have their own hard work used against them to subjugate them even further. So stand tall. Thank you for being here. Thank you for fighting. We do the work in the building, but it's only possible because you do the work every day. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by and thank you for the support, the continued support. All right, next up, we want to bring a worker, Amelia Avila, down one of the workers many years in the restaurants and right now one of the members for one way one fair wage come on down of you thank you Amelia. thank you thank you uh... good morning everyone hope you guys are warm because i am not <laughs> uh... as i drove here this morning i saw a billboard uh... reading improve your workplace and you know that's exactly why i'm here today uh... i've worked in the food service industry for quite some time now 
uh, as a now as a cook. And of course, I have a food handler's card. It's mandated. Emphasis on mandated through uh, ServeSafe. I paid for it, and now to find out the other day that they used that same money to lobby against me, to lobby my to lobby against my coworkers. Uh, I, I think it's not too difficult to see the the conflict there. You know, um, this has to change. Period. It's simply just that it's legal to use that same money that we are mandated to pay to lobby against us, keep our wages low. Uh, thank you, Senator Limon, uh, Assembly Members Lee and uh, Santiago, uh, for introducing legislation that would end this worker funded corporate lobbying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emilio. Next up is Saru Jaharaman. And Right now, she's sponsoring this uh, much needed support for one fair wage right now. And we want to bring that legislation and bring this person forward. Come on, Saru. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, my name is Sarah J. Rahman. I'm the president of One Fair Wage. We're a national organization of about 300,000 restaurant and service workers across the country and about 35,000 here in California. Um, we are representing the 14 million restaurant workers across the country, including, yes, fast food workers and also full service restaurant workers. There are 1.7 million restaurant workers in California, over a million of whom work in full service restaurants as servers and bartenders and kitchen staff and barbacks and busboys. Uh, and they are all part of this scheme that has been perpetrated by what we call the other NRA, the National Restaurant Association, for decades. We've been fighting the other NRA, both here in California and across the country, for two decades, for 20 years, fighting them on federal minimum wage increases, fighting them on state minimum wage increases in all 50 states. And what I want to share with you today, I hope you get some time to look at our, the history of the National Restaurant Association, but it has been around since 1919 when it was founded with the express mission, intent, and purpose of suppressing black workers' wages after emancipation. And at that time, they sought to essentially hire black workers for free, not pay them, and have them live on something called tips that was new to America. And since 1919, they've been fighting as a bully, bully organization, a bully trade lobby to keep workers' wages across the country from going down. We started fighting them 20 years ago, and when we started fighting, they started coming after us. Me and our members were attacked repeatedly. They followed us around the country. They put our children's pictures up on attack websites. They created attack uh, ads in newspapers. They went after funders and celebrities who supported us to their homes. They've been a bully organization for 20 years. And about four years ago, in the height of that bullying activity, uh, somebody from within the National Restaurant Association leaked some information to me that, in fact, all of the money that they use for lobbying and bullying doesn't come from the member corporations like Applebee's and IHOP, like we thought. It actually comes from workers who, for years, have been forced to pay for this food handler training across the country. Senator Limon mentioned the number, a couple million. It's actually 14 million workers who've been across the country forced to pay for this. Of that 14 million, 2 million are here in the state of California. The Restaurant Association has actually targeted California as the largest population of restaurant workers to fund not only California lobbying, but frankly to fund lobbying to stop the federal minimum wage for going up. And so what I want to express to you is that California workers Full service restaurant workers and fast food workers have been single handedly funding the suppression of their fellow workers' wages across the country at $7.25 the current federal minimum wage and $2.13 the current federal minimum wage for tipped workers. In other words, workers who get $15 an hour here in California unknowingly are keeping workers in the rest of the country from getting two, more than $2 an hour. It is evil, it is sadistic, it is sadistically brilliant in some ways. And that is why we are so grateful to Senator Limon and her fellow legislators for leading this effort to essentially cut off 
the uh, you know the the revenue from workers to fund their own lobbying efforts against them. And I do just want to say, I hope what I'm expressing is clear that the bill will not just have implications on California policy. This bill will have implications on the federal minimum wage and our ability to get it increased across the country. And so I want to thank Emilio and all of the workers from One Fair Wage. I want to thank our solidarity partners from Fight for 15 and the fast food workers. Together, all restaurant workers are standing up today across the country. We've got actions going on in eight states. California is one of eight states where there are actions going on to fight this horrific situation uh, and to end it once and for all. Thank you so much. I forgot to mention that we are actually a membership organization of not only 300,000 restaurant workers, but also 2,500 independent restaurant owners who are incredibly supportive of wage increases and have consistently said the other NRA doesn't speak for us. And so we're so grateful to Stella Dadding who came all the way. She's an owner of Day Trip Restaurant in Oakland, which you have, if you haven't picked out your Valentine spot, please check it out. <laughs> Day Trip in Oakland, a wonderful restaurant. And she's come all the way to on a busy, busy, busy restaurant day. In fact, the busiest day of the year, which is why we're here. Uh, to share as an independent restaurant owner why she supports this as well. Hi, I'm Stella Denig, uh, co-owner of an independent restaurant in Oakland, California, Day Trip. And I am here to say that the National Restaurant Association does not represent my interests. They do not. I was actually horrified when I learned through Saru originally um, that, you know, they're using serve safe and workers wages to lobby against them. I work so hard in our restaurant, <laughs> so hard to work against perpetuating the unjust toxic systems that exist in this industry. And, at, and I, I do that at our restaurant and for our team. And so I, when I learned this, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed that the NRA claims to stand for me. They do not. They do not stand for me. Um, and I definitely support this bill. We already pay for our team to pay for their food handler's permit. Um, we explicitly now do not use serve safe. We provide health benefits. We, pay, uh, we have paid sick leave. I support increasing wages for workers. Um, what I don't understand is who the NRA is actually here for. It is not me. Um, it's in my interest to increase wages for my team. It helps retain employees. It helps with job satisfaction, which just feeds the cycle. But when workers' funds are being used to lobby against their economic interests, that is deceitful, that is shady, that is not in the interest of this industry. Not to mention, if the NRA is using funds from workers for lobbying, then they don't actually have to be accountable to restaurant owners like me, to independent restaurant owners like me. So again, who are they here to support? Not independent restaurants, not workers. Um, I spent some time on their website really trying to understand it. And all, the only conclusion I could draw is that they are here to support big chains exclusively and lobby to, lobby to voters in support of exclusively big chains. Um, it's, according to their website, though, seven out of 10 restaurants are independently owned. And what's really shady is that the NRA gets taxed like a nonprofit, as far as I can understand, as a for-profit ent entity under the cover of advancing the interest of the broader trade. But again, whose interests? Because they're not mine as an independent restaurant owner. They're not workers. It really seems like it's exclusively the big chains. And, uh, and I am horrified. So that is all that I have to say today, but thank you. <laughs> I want to thank everybody today. Uh, it's a sad day. I mean, this is Black History Month, and oppression is still here. They're still oppressing the workers. They're still oppressing the people that are doing the work. So as, as a black man, to hear how they're taking our own wages and using them against us, it's a sad day. And I'm really just sick and tired of that. And that's something for me to them when we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, when we fight, and we telling them today, enough is enough. We sick and tired of your games, your tricks, these backhanded moves that they're doing to use our funding, our money that we're using to 
to be safe in the workplace and they turn around and use that against the workers, shame on them. And right now, we're going to say it right in front of this Capitol. We saying it right now with the support of our assembly and our senators that are here. And right now, we're going to fight and we're not going to stop until we win. We're going to march. And right now, we're going to let them hear our voice. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. We letting them know that we're here. We're not going anywhere. And right now, we're standing together in solidarity. Right now, as SEIU, California, proud to stand with one fair wage. Our labor siblings in California Labor Federation unite here and UFCW fight for 15 union support for legislation. But we're going to march and we want everyone is to know that we're standing together against this atrocity and we got to keep fighting. Thank you so much for being here today. Now we're going to go ahead and march. Everybody give yourself a round of applause. We're coming out here bearing this weather. But we want to right now throw your fist up in the air. Right now, we're letting them hear our voices, see us. We're, we're here to stand and fight. And when we fight, we win. 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 thank you. Thank you so much.